So I think he'll be fine and steamy as long as he keeps a low profile. The place that you can't do that, though, is the yacht. We talked about Savage, the way he tries to rise above the rewards and hold his positions. It's always direct right now in yacht. You can't really avoid the fight. It always comes down to an absolute brawl. And he's moving forward. A henchman knock right in front of him. Has C4s. Can just explode right off on all these builds and instantly end the fight. It's Red Rush who gets taken out. That was so good. Catching him by surprise. Turning that fight immediately into his favor. Now going to be able just to loot the rest of the yacht in peace. Something that Savage has, has struggled with. He, he got eliminated off spawn a couple different times in the games yesterday. So we'll see if he's going to be able to make it out. If he does, we're going to be scared as we move over to Sebi with a nice shotgun shot onto the player down below. He's putting that pressure down very, very quickly. 52 effective HP. He's trying to get in the box because he's got no material. Shot's going to come through. That's going to be wide and he gets the other one. But no, he misses. Vortex gets the elimination. Any type of elimination points. 100 points total overall so far. And he's looking to try to get a little bit aggressive. And this is something that, you know, his play style or not, he's got that potential to get both of these eliminations very, very quickly. You see, trying to surprise Kura. Shot's going to come through. Kura not even able to react. Is Taysan going to come from behind and get the elimination? And now he's immediately on to the next player. He's looking for the next drop down on height. It's one of the most powerful positions when it comes to fights. The higher you are, the more likely chance you have of landing headshots, the more control you have as well on your enemy and where he moves. So Taysan's position right now. This is exactly the fight that Hardfine needed to find. And the reason being is he just doesn't have that ability to, to get in now all of a sudden. Yeah, and right now we see Taysan actually, he's pushing forward and actually backing off time and time again. He's just manipulating the way Hardfine wants to push that fight. Hardfine has no mats, he's at full speed. If Taysan just pumps the brake slightly. Who is sitting near that bottom side of the zone. He's gonna get some tags towards the agency, but nothing really consequential and monumental here. So he's gonna find a player rotating along. His old build, his shot's gonna go through. He's gonna get Drobin in the bush, finding him out there. What an elimination, and now, He's got the harpoon to get those mats very quickly, very easily. Doesn't have to risk getting take, shots taken onto him, but he does end up losing some HP. But effectively, he's in a really good spot. He gets those four points, and this is what he needs. This could be the catalyst that sets him rolling. Air boxing up from someone else. Umplify is playing this perfectly. This is so good. He's going to be able to sneak around, get a shot, trade into AR shots there. Is the shield going to be cracked? He's actually going to miss it, but the continued pressure is going to crack the shields, and now that's his key to move into the fight. He's got the, the catalyst to go. His aggression going to go up very, very well here, but shots coming through. All of a sudden, his aggression may turn against him, but no, Tiago going to fall with a quick turnaround pump shotgun. Tiago just did not have enough gas left. No more shields available to take these close range fights. Umplify will also be very weak because he traded a few shots with Tiago over there. So he's going to have to back off and heal up. His friend, his org teammate, Matso, is going to be the one trying to push him slightly. But seeing Metal, one of the strongest builds in Fortnite. Within the European region, Lecce looking to go aggressive, looking to get into the box. He's got the information that he needs. You see edits coming through here from Airwax's perspective. Lecce just trying to get the wall with their SMG. Shots coming through. Airwax makes an edit and Lecce takes him down. To everyone else so far in early game. It was back and forth for him. Super decisive in the box. Controlling edits. Getting eliminations. Scully as well. Top five here, Clay. He's in his own fight. You talked about upper echelon. He's going to be fighting all the way for the top spots. Has the beams and gets them down as well. One HP, Clay. This is turning into a fourth party scenario. Everyone in this side has to be aware that if they are not, they're going to get swung up. Mexi going to be able to come behind. Snappy coming behind Mexi. Everybody is coming behind everyone in the fight. is continuing here. But now all of a sudden, Blackie has realized. He said, okay, I hear this person. I see him now. That's going to give him information. He needs to act on. He needs to go aggressive quickly. But he gets taken down pretty low. 51 HP. He does have a flopper. But I don't think he's going to have time to pop. A shot's going to come through. No, he's going to fight Cartoon off guard there. Cartoon taken out with the ring around the rosy. Blackie with 51 HP. Just had to get touched slightly to be taken out of game one of Europe on day two, but he survives. He is, you know, not looking good. He really has to manage those shots perfectly. Fanta, though, could get aggressive. He sees an edit right here that he could hop into. This could be Fanta getting an elimination that he wants. And you see, he is going to make the moves. SMG going in. Shots going to connect onto him. He's doing a lot of damage, though. And he is going to get the elimination onto Kezix. Kezix ammo not there. Not able to make the, the play as Fanta caught him off guard. 
18 points, she's going to have to actually move very fast compared to the competition and climb this tall mountain in front of her to get towards everyone else on the leaderboard. And number one just got taken out. Janice is out of this game. That is so big for the standings. Moki getting in a box. Shots coming through. She is getting the fight in her favor. Lunif does go down. But number one is out right now. Shia, Wolfies could take the lead. Wolfies could possibly take that lead. And I believe Janice has been holding it for this entire time, mentally at least. Entire scenario that he has in game one. He needs 40 points at least to have a say of where he's supposed to be. He's going to be doing it with beams, usually staying back after this, just playing for that storm surge. The damage overall, but it's a huge rocket that travels across the map and takes out Verox. Oh, I, you know, the mastermind of his own destiny there, Benji, making the rocket work, didn't even shoot it, did nothing, just kind of let it go. I don't know if he's got a lot of tags, but he's setting up one right now. Setting up one, but he's getting set up at the same time by someone else. You called it, Clay. The Meowskull's Pew Pew Rifle from the Mythic, not POI, but the Mythic Big Agent who's on the map. Gets picked up and used by Glory. Easy availability for eliminations at mid-range, and he picks them right up. Piece, piece of the puzzle right here. Taysan and Savage are right nearby each other. Savage dead center zone. He is not playing around today. He went middle and he's saying, you know what? I've got a launch pad. I'll rotate where I need to. I'm going to look. I'm going to get tags because he's got 400 plus AR ammo in his inventory. He's going to be able to pick up players like Steelix there. That was insane. We're seeing these players all the way from range. Savage and Benji just bringing out all the tricks from their books, trying to get these eliminations that we don't usually see. This could be Aqua's game totally. We could call it right now. That being said, though, you cannot forget people moving in. The items they have. Savage's insane rainbow loadout. So many high-class weapons available for him to use. At the same time, Taysen's positioning just being used once again for his third elimination overall. Does not have the prettiest of loadouts, but he's making it work. The shields and the reprieve is going to come in the form of that metal base, but he is not in zone. He needs to find an impact frag right now. And there's someone running by. Shots could come through. The edit goes through, and he does take down Noah Riley. A surprise elimination is exactly what he needed. And that might just be enough for him to get into the top 10. When he started this game, he was 12th place overall. And that's just two players that you're mentioning. This type of relationship will go down amongst so many people on the server. As we saw from that big overhead view, there's just about five people in zone right now. And everyone else has to move in. And Alex is not holding anything back. RPGs being put down. He wants to, if he can, get as many eliminations as possible. If he can't find a way to move, but he finds a launch pad. He pops it up. He's going up in the air now. The one thing you don't want to get beamed. The one thing you don't want to do is get beamed up in the air. You want to find a good base as well to drop down and post up with. He does. And Alex is safe for the next portion of this game. And who's not safe is Wolfies and CRR. They both go down. One, two, and three are out of this game right now. The lead is up for grabs. Aqua, I still believe in this game. This is turning out right there in the middle of your screen. You see Aqua. You see Mitro. A lot of big names that were near the top of the leaderboard. Mitro, not so much, but still able to go anyone's way. Aqua could run with this. Yep, and top 10 in Yachi's right at the bottom as well. Mitro, though, will be on height. We're talking about how good Aqua is. Now when we see Mitro and his loadout, Sky's loot, the grappler, that mythic AR, it hurts so hard and you're able to just stay on top and move around as well with the ass assistance of that grappler. Mitro is over so many floppers. This man has been saving this loadout, saving this entire moment for the end game, which we're going to be traveling to in just a second. As soon as you see these zones move, that's the hardest portion of the competition for so many of these players. Even if it is Aqua on mid ground, when you're up against the top players at the top, like Mitro Clay, it's impossible, especially when he has this loot. Not yet impossible, because reminder, in the game that Aqua won, he build fought Mitro for high ground, took it from him in the moving zone, and Mitro went down. He got slayed out by Aqua. But this is looking much better here for Mitro as he's going to get an elimination there onto Kylie. Flying through the air, swatted on down. Mitro looking to get another elimination. Shots continuing to go through here for him. He does have to pause or to reload. But Mitro setting himself up for success using the grappler very, very effectively. 
Yep, now it's all about the ebb and flow, making sure both you take control of the new builds you're building, the new height that Mitro is establishing, and also making sure you use the grappler in tangent with that AR. A balance right now is what Mitro has to hold, and he has the rain on the whole server with it. Maybe slightly too high, he's going to be way far away from getting that big damage down onto some eliminations, but if he has the position, we talked about it early game, how important height is, he can have control. That's another one picked up onto Mage. He gets silenced, taken out of game one so far and he's looking back in zone he's playing every single portion of the game you might be seeing he's slowing down but a launch pad there to speed him right back up drops down with a dragon corn unicorn glider and then after that drops down a few more shots over to second height that could be aqua we're not sure let's she also popping off it's a top 12 right now play top 12 indeed and mitro continuously losing the grapplers so well savage is in here vibes going down Savage, Moki in this game, taking out Savage, slaying him there on his run. Lechi in this game as well. And they're going now. It's a top six situation. Mitro controls it, but he's losing a lot right now. So many things are happening on the low ground. Low ground is where it's at. That is the chaos that is going to ensue. It's going up this mountain. You see Andalus going down. Mitro taking down Lechi. This could be the run that Mitro needed to get back into the game. Shots coming through. Bit of battle for high ground. Mitro going to maintain his height. Three players in this game remaining, and we're not even in the ace zone. Mitro, though, looking really good. It's Aqua! Aqua and Rezon. Aqua could run away with the lead if he's able to make something happen. Mitro, though, misplaying just a little bit, dropping down. Aqua getting the shot in. This is reminiscent of yesterday. Aqua going for the high ground is going to take it from him. And now we talked about it. We mentioned it. Aqua on the high ground knows how to win the games, and this should be his to close out. And Mitro has the grappler, though. He has the floppers in Storm. We saw it before. We predicted it as well. Rezon, good defensive blur. will stay down low. Does not have those options. Only has his builds. Has to utilize. Has the Surt Tarps. But it's all wood. Mitro makes his move. Aqua hears it. Tries to stop. Now everything is just a complete 50-50 between these three players. Mitro taking a big hit. He might be out for the count here. It's a final 1v1 between Rezon and Aqua. And it's Aqua, the Hype King, possibly. The Titans are dwindling down. And there's a whole new switch up on the first page it's aqua with two wins at first place finder second third and fourth gained no points that game